Amen. I'm glad he loves me tonight, aren't you? I'm glad he paid the price that I couldn't pay. <laughs> I'm glad he's able. He's able. Revelation chapter number 18. Revelation chapter number 18. And, and as we uh, begin to look at this, we know that uh, we looked at Revelation chapter 17 last Wednesday night. And in that we saw the destruction of religious Babylon or the apostate or the a false church. And here in chapter number 18, we're going to see the destruction of political Babylon or, or a commercial Babylon. And, and we're going to see why Babylon will be destroyed. And we know that uh, uh, we'll, we'll get into that here in just a few verses. But here in the very first verse of chapter number 18... He said, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened, he said, with his glory. So John, he, as, he is, as his vision here in the, in the revelation that he saw this angel come down, and this angel had the glory of God upon him. He said, it lightened the earth. And again, we know that when, when, this, uh, when, when after this thousand years or, or during a thousand years, when, uh, or let me say after the thousand years when you have this uh, new Jerusalem, that Christ himself will be the light. Yeah. And we see here this angel, he said he was lightened with his glory. But, but John said, after these things. Now what things is he talking about? Again, he's talking about those, those things that he saw. And again, we know all these things that we've talked about, and yet he saw the destruction of the false church. Yeah. And we, we looked at that just a little bit. We're not going to go over all that again, but remember that that false church is everything that the true church is not. It's, it's, it's everything uh, that's against the true church. And we see here that this false church, she was a a persecutor of the people. And all these things is going to happen to her, and even at the end, we find that this false church was destroyed by herself and the political leaders had destroyed this church. But yet we notice here about this church that you and I, to be part of the true church, we're talking about the church, not Revival Baptist Church, or Liberty Baptist Church, or, or Ebenezer Baptist Church, or any other Baptist church, to be part of the true church, you must be what? You must be born again. You can't get away from that. There's no getting away. If, if, if any church today, then, or in the past has taught there's any other way than through Jesus Christ, it is a false church. I don't care what denomination it may belong to. If it says, oh, there's another way, it is teaching a false doctrine. Period. The only way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Trusting in Him. There's no other way. So, this false church will be destroyed. And he says, and he cried, verse number two, he said, and he cried with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, he said, and it has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit. He said, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And we see here, John, he said this again. He says it's fallen, it's fallen. That's a double judgment that's going to fall upon Babylon. But yet we see here, what is he talking about? He's talking, well, he's talking about both that religious or that false church, and now we're looking at that political or the commercial part of here of Babylon. But notice here, he said it's going to be a, a, a dwelling place. He said a habitation, a habitation of devils. Spirits, devils, fallen angels are real, by the way. Matter of fact, we're coming up next month on a holiday that celebrates these things. Be careful how you celebrate. Dabbling in demons will get you in trouble. It will get you in trouble. Oh, it's just for fun. No, there's nothing fun. If you're going to do it, do it in a saintly way. 
Don't, don't worship the devils. Don't do that. And we see here, he said it, it, it's a cave. He said a habitation of devils. And, a, and he said in a hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every, he said, unclean, he said, and hateful bird. Now what is he saying here? He's saying this Babylon has become the capital city of evil. Now what does he mean? Well, remember, what has happened up to this point? Oh, well, we've seen that we're at the very end of the seven-year tribulation period, the very end of the last three and a half years called the Great Tribulation. But what has happened? Well, we know over here the very next event that's going to happen is what? Well, the church is going to be called up. He said the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 that we are called up. I'll just use what the Bible says, called up. What does that mean? We're going to be caught up. Yeah. Where are we going to be caught up to? The air. Who are we going to meet? Christ. Where are we going to go? With Him. So we see here. So what's happened? Well, the church is gone. And now, over here, as a matter of fact, in 2 Thessalonians, now I know a lot, a lot believes that the Holy Spirit is going to be gone too. The Holy Spirit is not going to be here on the earth, but I would disagree with that. Because the Holy Spirit has always been on the earth. The Holy Spirit has always had a dwelling place on the earth. Matter of fact, he said when it was form, without form and void, he said the Spirit went across the waters. So we see here, well, what's, what's happened here? Well, 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, verse number 8, he said, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now leteth, he said, will let. Who is he? Well, that's the Holy Spirit. What does he do? He restrains evil. He said, until he be taken out of the way. So what's happened here? Well, the Holy Spirit, his work, his, his restraining work that he does today, he is restraining evil. He will be taken out of the way. Well, what does that mean? His work of restraining evil, he's no longer going to be restraining evil. Evil is going to have a heyday. Evil will have free reign upon the earth. The Holy Spirit will no longer restrain them from doing their dirty work. But yet, how are those people getting saved? Remember, they overcome Him by what? The blood of the who? The blood of the Lamb. And by what? The word of their testimony. Who is going to help them Make it through this period. Hey, the Holy Spirit is going to have to, is going to be here and help those through to help those be able to withstand the tribulation and the trouble that's going to come their way. He's still here. His work has changed. Let me say grace is always grace, okay? God's grace will always be God's grace. And again, in time of great tribulation, God is offering grace to those who will be saved. Those who don't take that mark of the beast. And we see here, this is a habitation or a, a dwelling place of demons, of devils. He said of, of spirits, foul spirits. Now remember, what happened in Daniel chapter number 10? Do you remember Daniel chapter number 10? Daniel had been praying. He'd have been a praying. And, and, and God hadn't answered his prayer. Daniel kept a praying. God hadn't answered his prayer. But yet we find that he heard it on the very first day he, the very first day he prayed. He'd sent his angel to help him. But yet there's some trouble happened. He said, we heard you the first day. I was on the way. He said, but the prince of Persia restrained him. And remember Jude chapter, well, Jude chapter, Jude in the book of Jude, there ain't but one chapter, by the way. In the book of Jude, you remember, Michael, the archangel, was disputing over the body of Moses. With who? The devil. And we find here, they are contention. They are, they are devils that will contend. And this is nothing new, by the way. And we see here, what is, it, what is this place? He said it's going to be a haven for every sinful and, and, and wicked practice upon this earth. That's what it's going to be. And we said here, and not only that, in verse number three, he said, for all nations. 
Now again, he said all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. He said, and the kings of the earth have committed fornications with her. And he said, the merchants, the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And we see here, what is she? Well, she is political. She is, she is commercial Babylon. And she's making people rich. And what are they doing? Well, they're, they're really going in uh, cahoots with her. They're really going in alliance with her. They're agreeing with her. No matter how sinful practice they may be, people are going right along with it. Happening today, even today. Yes. I know there's a church... Not around here, but they are around here, by the way. They're discussing whether it's okay to ordain and to have homosexuals as pastors. The Word of God has not changed. The Word of God calls it an abomination. The Word of God hadn't changed. I don't know why they feel now that, that the Word has changed. The Word has not changed. All they have to do is go back to the Word. And that's the problem that we have today. People are getting away from the Word and going into, well, let, we just got to go with society and how they feel. Absolutely not. Society is what got Sodom and Gomorrah in trouble. And we see here Society here, religious, not religious, well, religious Babylon, and now here, political Babylon has gotten, they're, they're, they've gotten in trouble. They've got, matter of fact, religious Babylon, by the way. That was a godless church. They had no God in it. The only God they had in it was the God of themselves. Self was ruling there. And we see here, he, this, this uh, political Babylon, he said, and I heard another voice. Verse number four, he said, I heard another voice. He says, come from, he said, from heaven, saying, come out. He said, he heard this voice. He said, another voice come, he said, uh, from heaven, saying, come out of her, my people. And be, he said, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues. Now here, what's happening here? Again, during great tribulation, during great trouble, God is giving a space of grace to repent. There's a space there. He said, come out of her, my people. So what is that saying? There's some there that has not took the mark of the beast. There's some there that still are loyal to God. And he said, hey, come out. Now, does that sound familiar? It ought to. Go and read the account about Abraham and Lot. You remember Sodom and Gomorrah? God come by and he visited with Abraham and Abraham kind of dealt with God. He tried to bargain. He tried to uh, 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 talk God down. Well, if he could find, he started out with 50 and he said, well, probably ain't no 50. They finally got down to how many? Five people. If you can find, if you can find five righteous people people. He said, would you destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? And he said, no. I wouldn't destroy it for five. But yet, they couldn't find five righteous people. Now, you go to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews called Lot, righteous Lot. So was Lot a righteous man? Absolutely. He was called righteous in the book of Hebrews. So yet, Lot could not, he could not he couldn't get his own children convinced to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. His daughters stayed. Her husband, they laughed at him to scorn. Yet what happened? They were destroyed just as all the other people were in Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? Because they would not come out of her. They were destroyed. Now, who did Lot bring out of Sodom and Gomorrah? Do you remember? Well, he had a wife bringing her out and two daughters. Well, the wife was coming out. She looked back. And the Bible says she turned into a pillar of salt there by the salt sea. 
But yet his two daughters, his two daughters, fearing that his father would have no descendants, committed a grave sin. Two enemies, mortal enemies of Israel, were born. The Moabites and the Ammonites were born from Lot and his two daughters. And we find here, this is the same. He said, come out of her. He said, you come out and be saved. He said, don't be caught up. Matter of fact, if you stay, you know what? You're guilty by association. You stay in there, you're going to get destroyed along with everybody else. And that's what he said. He's given a warning here. He's given a space. He's given, hey, and hallelujah. Aren't you glad during the great, during the, even the worst time, God gives a space of grace. He gives that time of repentance. You know why? He's faithful. And he's a just God. Not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. So we see, why did he do that? And verse number five gives us a reason. Now, again, now when we look at that, and he told them, he told, he's telling them to come out. What does, he, what does he tell you and I to do, by the way? What does he tell you and I to do? To come out. He said, From, and be you separate. Hallelujah. He's telling you and I, we ought not to be able to act like the world. We ought not to act like the world. Somebody, when people see you or I, they should see something different in us than they do anybody else. There's something in us that should, it should, hey, people ought to say, hey, there's something different about them. And when they can't tell the difference, there's a problem. There's a problem. And that's what he said here. He said, for her sins have reached unto heaven. And God hath remembered her iniquities. And now it's not that God has forgot, by the way. He didn't, he didn't say, oh yeah, by the way, I need to do this. No, God knows. And he knows. Now, what does he do? Again, he gives that space of grace. He gives that space for repentance. But yet, he will not delay his judgment if there's no repentance that comes. You remember a little town that uh, Jonah went, he went to Nineveh, and he said, boy, he didn't want to go. Why? Because he didn't like the Ninevites. Why didn't he like the Ninevites? Because they were cruel and wicked people. Yes. He did not like the Ninevites. He ran from God. But yet, we know, we know the story. God turned him around. He, he, got, he got to Nineveh. He preached what God told him to preach. And then what did Jonah do? He went up on a hill to watch. For the, he watched the destruction. He was wanting to see the fireworks. Well, he got disappointed, didn't he? Why? Because they repented. Now, 100, about 120 years later, they got wiped out, by the way. But yet, during this time, they repented. They come out, they repented of their sins and God spared Nineveh. Why did he spare Nineveh? Now, did God's judgment change? Absolutely not. His judgment did not change. The situation changed. Why? They repented. God's judgment was still there. If you don't repent, God's judgment is there. Just because we're good, just because we say the right things, we do the right things, God's if, we don't, if we're not born again, his judgment is there. It's there. And he says, for her sins. Now again, Babylon has got a long history of sin, by the way. We can go all the way back. We can go back. Who was it? Who was it that uh, founded Babylon, by the way? Nimrod. Who's Nimrod. Good question. I'm glad, I'm glad I asked. He's in the, he's in the, I couldn't tell you neither off the top of my head. <laughs> I was hoping you could tell me. But anyway, he said Nimrod. Now who is Nimrod? Nimrod was a hunter. He was a hunter. Who did he hunt, men? And he was a hunter. And we see here, what did he do? Now again, Babylon, that, he, that city's mentioned over 290 times. 290 times Babylon is mentioned. You go all the way back from, uh, matter of fact, Babylon is what was one of the wonders of the ancient world. 
Remember the hanging gardens of Babylon? Matter of fact, before, uh, during the Persian Gulf War and all this, all these things that happened with Sodom Hussein, you know what he's doing? He was trying to rebuild Babylon. He was trying to rebuild that city. Matter of fact, matter of fact, they found a brick in the old part of Babylon that had his name in it. He wanted to be part of the foundation of Babylon. And we see here her sins had come up, had come up and again, that's not, that's not that God has delayed his judgment, but yet for repentance sake, God has given them a time of repentance. Then he goes on to say, he said, reward, reward her. Now, again, how is evil going to be rewarded? Now, again, that's why he says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. He said, I will repay. You and I, we don't need to take vengeance on our, for ourselves. We need to let God, let go of things and let God have control because when God, when he, do, when he does a payment, he's going to do it a lot better than what we could. Here's what he's going to do. He said, reward her even as she rewarded you. All right. Better be careful. You ever say, you ever, you ever heard this, you're going to pay for your raising? I've heard that quite a bit growing up. I heard that quite a bit after I grew up. But yet, they're going to pay now for how they've treated God's people. Not only how they've treated those that did not take the mark of the beast, but how they've treated Israel they're going to pay. And he says, reward her even as she rewarded you. He said, and double her. He said, God, just don't reward her. Give her double. Boy, is that, that sounds good, doesn't it? Until you find out what double is going to be. Give her double according to her works. Now, what she's done to you, you give her double in return for it. She's in trouble. She's in trouble. He says, according to her works in the cup which she hath filled, he says, fill to her double. So what has she filled her cup with? What has she done? What is what is religion? What is this political Babylon done? What has Babylon done here? She has filled her cup not with the good things of God, not with the works of God, not with the word of God, but here's what she's filled her cup with is torment trouble and blasphemy against God. She's filled her cup. She's filled it with anger against God. And he said, now, for what she's filled her cup with, you give her double for what she's done. Obadiah, chapter number 1, verse number 15 says this, For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. He said, As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee, and thy reward shall return upon thine head. Now, if you go to the book of Psalms, chapter 137, and again, we, we read Psalms 137, we, we know this is a time when Israel, when, when they captured and when Babylon had taken them into captivity, and they were saying, oh, we're going to just hang our harps upon the willows. We can no longer sing the songs of Zion. And again, we know here their captives had, had tormented them, had persecuted them, and said, oh, why don't you sing us a song of Zion? They were poking fun at them. But can I say this? Even in times of trouble, a child of God, even in times of captivity, a child of God can praise God. What did Paul and Silas do when they were thrown into prison? Hey, they were singing. They were singing praise unto God. And again, he said, Ezra, quit feeling sorry for yourself and go to praising God. Then we go on into that nine little verses there. And it talks about the destruction of Babylon, by the way. It talks about that in, Israel, in Psalms 137. But we see here, he says, how much, verse 7, how much? She hath glorified herself and liveth and lived deliciously. He said, So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. You know what she's done? She said, I can't be touched. 
I've got too much money. I've got too much wealth. I've got too much power. Hey, she said, I said as a queen. He said, I'm not no widow. I'm not no, I'm not no poor lady. He said, I am in control. I am in, I am in power. You can't touch me. That's the attitude they had. But can I say God will adjust an attitude? And He does it a whole lot better than we can. He does it a whole... He is more effective at it than we are. And here she said prosperity. Now what has that prosperity done? That prosperity that Babylon has seen through this commercial, through the riches and through all of her trading has blinded her to God's judgment. She said, God won't judge me. I'm too rich. I'm, I'm too good. I, there's too many good things that I've done. And she, everything she, wasn't, she was doing was not good, by the way. Now, good things done can have an evil purpose, by the way. There are a lot of good things that's done with an evil intent behind them. You've got to watch. And he says, he says, and I shall see no sorrow. She didn't think she'd be touched. She didn't think God would judge her. And in verse 9 says, And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, he said, shall bewail her and lament for her, for they shall see the smoke of her burning. Let me, I'll skip verse number 8. I need to read that. Therefore, she said, because she thinks this, Therefore, because she feels that she can't be touched, therefore, because she is a, she is a habitation of demons, because she is a habitation of every foul spirit, because she is a capital of evil, she says, therefore, shall her plagues come in one day. Now, when you talk about a day, the day of the Lord, he's talking about a day, a time, a, a calendar event that's going to take place. When we look at the day of the Lord, that means God is going to come and judgment's going to take place. A day of the Lord means when God comes and he, and he intervenes in the affairs of man. So he gives, us the, he gives us a day here. Now how many days are they? Well, if we go with the Jewish calendar, how many days are in a month? That's right, 30 days. So out of 30 days, there's coming a day that judgment is going to come. Out of the 360 days, there's coming a day of judgment. So that time is coming. He says, shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord. He says, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And we see here the strength of God. No man can stand before God. No man can stand. He is strong. And no man can stand against God. And we see here Babylon and her pious attitude thinking that she can't be touched. God, he said, I'm going to utterly burn her. Now, what does that mean, to be utterly burned? Now, we see here, what does that mean? That means sudden destruction is going to come upon her. That means she's going to be destroyed. How is she going to be destroyed? With God's power and his might. Now, to be utterly burned, it means you're burned up. You're burned from head to toe. There's not a place that's not been burned. Not a place that's not been touched. Not a place that's not been damaged by his judgment. And we see here, and he says, in the kings of the earth, verse 9, where he was trying to read, and, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, he says, shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning and standing... <laughs> Standing afar off. He says, standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour. Notice now, here's the time. 
We know a day. There's a day coming. What's the length of time? One hour. Can he, can God destroy Babylon in one hour? Absolutely. He can destroy whatever he wants in an hour. He created the heavens and the earth and all this therein in how many days? Six days. Everything. Everything as we know it, he created in six days. Do you think he'll have a trouble destroying one city in one hour? Absolutely not. I believe it's a literal hour. I think that's just the time. It's going to be fast. It's going to be furious. And he says, in one hour. He said, thy judgment has come. And we see here, what are these kings, what are these political leaders doing? What are, hey, what are these leaders of the people doing? Those that promise the people all these things that they cannot keep. Yet, what are they doing? They're standing afar off over here. They're seeing Babylon on fire. And yet, what are they doing? They're not offering not one bit of help. For they cannot help. They're saying, I'm, I'm, I'm staying out of that. For I don't want to get caught up in her judgment. And they will be judged, by the way. They're not going to escape judgment. We find here these leaders are watching her burn. Who's burn? Babylon burns. She's burning down. God is destroying Babylon. He's come against her. And now he said they're wailing. And they're crying. Now why do you think they're wailing and they're crying? Is it because they see the judgment of God? Do you, do you think because they're repenting of their evil works? Do you think they're crying and, 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 and wailing because of, of the things, the evil deeds that they did against the people? No! Here's why they're crying. They're watching all their political gains and all their political hopes, all the things, all their power go up in smoke. They're seeing everything that they work for, they try to do, go up in smoke. They're seeing every, everything they say, well, look what I've done. Look at me, look at me. They're seeing all of me get burnt. They're seeing it go away. And he said, why? He said, he said because they're standing afar off, he said, for fear of her torment. They didn't want to get caught up in what they were seeing happening to political or commercial Babylon. These kings, these political leaders, hey, what are they did? They're running off. And leaving those to their own self. They don't have any leaders there now. He said the kings have ran. They, again, they're standing afar off. And again, and he said in the merchants, verse number 11. And the merchants of the, of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. Here's why. For no man, he said, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Shop is closed. That merchandise that has now made them rich, that merchandise that they, they took advantage of, that, that merchandise where they, they probably raised the price, that merchandise that they, they probably uh, uh, doubled, whatever it may be, that, that, that living that they made now is no longer available to them. Remember about, I, I think it's, it's probably been about 10 years ago, they had a big gas shortage. You know, had a hurricane come through. Had a gas shortage. And there in Murphy, there were several gas stations that jacked their price up over $5 a gallon. What were they doing? They was taking advantage of the people. Yeah. I won't buy gas there today just because of that. Right. And we find that that's what these people here were doing. They are taking advantage of the people. They have been taking advantage of the people and now no longer are they going to be able to do that because men will not buy their merchandise for how long? Anymore. No longer will they be able to sell. No longer will anybody buy. And again, we, we see here verses 12 through 15. What is it that they won't be able to sell? The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all, he said, and all the fine wood and manner of vessels of ivory 
and all manners of vessels, vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. He says, and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from Everything that man has run after other than God now is no longer going to be available. All these things that took man's attention away from God, now God is going to destroy. Now man's attention will be on God. Hallelujah. When we get to heaven, I like that. You know, I like that. We won't be worried. We won't be wanting to be anywhere else. We won't be looking out the window wishing we were somewhere else. You know why? Because we're going to have a different mindset. We're not going to have this mindset we have today. You know what we're going to be? You know what we're going to be in heaven? I know that this, I'm, I'm glad you're sitting down. We're going to be content with where we are. Hallelujah. Is that not going to be great? How many of us are content where we are today? I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I get very discontented, don't you? Absolutely. I get discontented about, I, every time I look at the month and I, I look at our bank account, I get pretty discontented. Well, let me rephrase it. I get discouraged. But yet, when, we, when we're in heaven, none of that. We'll be contented. And we'll be encouraged and never discouraged. Right? Well, won't that be great? And we find here, he said all these things. He said in the merchants, verse 15, the merchants of these things which were made, he said these merchants were made rich by her, by who? By commercial Babylon, by political Babylon. They were made rich selling all these things. He says, stand afar off again. Again, he, he repeats, he said, for fear of torment, weeping and wailing. Now, again, we see these merchants. They're, they're over here. They're crying because their stores are shut down. They're being burned up. They no longer can sell. Nobody's no longer going to buy. They're, hey, they're living. They're, even though they're rich, it's not going to help them. And we see here all the goods, everything, Everything they had to offer. Now notice verse number 14. He said, And everything that they had to offer, he said, The fruits that thy soul lusted after, he said, are departed from thee. And all the things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. Everything is gone. If you underline your Bible, I'd underline this phrase. And thou shalt find them no more at all. Now what does that mean? What does no more at all mean? Exactly what it says. No more at all. Never again. Now you'll see this. This phrase is going to be in this chapter about six times or so. It repeats and he, and he gives us other things here that's going to be no more at all. And when we see here, this destruction, now what is he talking about? This destruction here, Babylon, is going to be complete. It's going to be total. And we see here, verses 16, he said, and saying, and saying, alas, he said, alas, he said, alas, alas, that great city was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones. He says, for in one hour, again, we see this time frame, this, this time of judgment. He says, in one hour, so great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster, he said, and all the company of ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. He said, all these, whether they traded by land or by sea, he said, all the merchants were out of business. Now, what's he saying? They're mourning over the destruction of the job. Matter of fact, Job over here, Job chapter number 20, verses number 27 through 29 says this, The heaven shall reveal his iniquity, and the earth shall rise up against him, and the increase of his house shall depart, and his goods shall flow away. He said, In the day of his wrath, and this is a portion of the wicked man from God, and the heritage appointed unto him by God. So we see here Babylon, 
is being destroyed. Now, why does God want to destroy Babylon so bad? Why is it that God, is, hey, that I'm going to destroy her, I'm going to wipe her out? Why is that? Well, here's why. Now, you remember, the children of Israel had not let the land rest for 490 years. What are they supposed to do? Every seven years, they're supposed to let the land rest. They're supposed to let it rest. So God said, you ain't let this land rest. 490 years. He says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send you into captivity. I'm going to send you in captivity for 70 years. That makes up to 490 years of every seventh year. For 70 years, you're going to go into captivity. And he's going to use Babylon as a captors. What did Babylon do? Well, 2 Chronicles chapter 36, 21. Well, let me read 36 and 6. He says, And against him came up Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and bound him in fetters. Who's this? This is the king of Israel. He said, Carry him to Babylon. They had not let... He said they had not let the land rest for 490 years. Second Chronicles 36, 21, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land has enjoyed her Sabbath, until she has rested for those 70 years. He said, what is he going to do? For as long as she, she, she said, for as long as she, as she lay desolate and keep Sabbath to fulfill three score and 10 years, 70 years. Now why, again, is God going to judge Babylon as he is judging Babylon? Because Babylon went above and beyond what they were supposed to do. God had sent them to bring Israel into captivity so that the land may rest for the 70 years. But yet here's what Babylon did. He said in 2 Chronicles chapter number 36, verse number 19, and they burnt the house of God and break down the walls of Jerusalem. And burn, he said, and burn all the places thereof with fire and destroy the goodly vessels thereof. What did they do? They went past what God had them to do. So therefore God is going to judge Babylon for what she did. Matter of fact, over here in Jeremiah 29 and 10, for thus saith the Lord, or Leviticus, let me go up in Jeremiah 25 and 11. And, and, the, and this whole shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king. He said, of Babylon, 70 years. Well, here, Leviticus chapter number 25 and verse 4 said, In the seventh year, he says, uh, shall be a Sabbath of rest in the land. He said, a Sabbath for the Lord, that thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard. And we see why, because they did not do this, they hadn't let the land rest. Jeremiah 29 and 10 says, For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you, he said, and perform my good word towards you, causing you to return unto this place. What is he going to do? He's going to bring them back out of Babylon. Now remember Jeremiah 29 and 11. He said, for I know, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, the thoughts of peace and not of evil. He said, to give you an expected end. You know what, church? Israel has an expected end. We know, we're going to see here, here in the next uh, Next chapter, Israel is going to be brought in to the millennial king. They got an expected in. But you know what? So do we. What's the church is expected in? In my father's house are many mansions. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I like what he says. I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. We have and expected in. What is that expected in? Hey, that's where Christ forever and ever. So does Israel. Israel will be with Christ. They will be brought in to this millennial king. They will have a king. They will have a kingdom. They haven't expected in. Jeremiah 51 and 11 says, Make bright the arrow, arrows and gather the shield. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. And he says, For his device against Babylon to destroy it, because it is a vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. They went above. They went beyond. Not only did he punish Babylon with the, with the Medes and the Persians, but he's going to destroy them at the end. 
totally, completely. And he says, and here, and he goes on to say here, verse number 16 or, or 17, he said, for in one hour, so great riches has come to naught. He said, every shipmaster and all the company of ships and sailors, as many as trade by the sea, stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like unto this great city? He said, and they cast dust on their heads and cried weeping and wailing, saying, alas, alas, that great city we're in were made rich. All that had ships in the sea by reason of her coastlines in one hour, again, this one hour, this time of judgment says she is made desolate. And we see this time, this judgment has come upon Babylon. She is destroyed in an hour. Their, their merchandise, their, their commercial is gone. I like what he said in verse 20, and we're going we're gonna to get done. We're, we're on, we only have a few more verses. He said, rejoice over her. Now, here's heaven's point of view, by the way. Man's point of view is what? Weeping and wailing. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, me. Look what, look what has happened to me. But here's what heaven says, rejoice. See, heaven's point of view is quite different than our point of view, than man's point of view. He said, rejoice over her, thou heaven. And ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. God said, hey, I'll take care of her. And when he said, I'll take care of her, he'll do it. And he'll do it the right way. You remember those souls under the altar crying, how long, oh Lord, how long will it be before you take vengeance? How long? Well, he's taking vengeance. It's time, the time has come, the judgment has come. And he says, and he says, and the mighty angel took up a millstone. He said, like, he said, took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus, with violence shall be the great city. Shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. We'll have no evidence of Babylon anymore. She'll be wiped off. Wiped off the map. And the voices of her harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all. There'll be no more joyful music. There'll be no more singing. He says, And no craftsman or what whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of the millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light... He said, in the light of a candle shall shine, shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth and for by, their, and for by thy sorceries were nations deceived. What did they do? Babylon deceived the nations. She was a wicked not only was she wicked in religion, but she was wicked in her dealings. She was wicked in her politics. She was wicked in her commercial. And he said, in her faith and, and in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints. And all that were slain upon the earth. So God took vengeance upon Babylon. Why? Because she killed the prophets. She's killed the saints. And he said, although she said she is a murderer. And God put his judgment upon her. You know, when he cast that great millstone into the sea, what, what was that? You know, that's, that's something that's going to devastate that. I don't know if it's going to be a, a tsunami or whatever it may be, but it's going to wipe her out. She's no, longer, she's no longer going to be even known to anybody. And again, how, how, how she's treated the people, God said she's going to put her lights out. Her light is going to be put out. No more to shine anymore. She's going to be wiped out. As a matter of fact, when she does that, right now, that city, that city is going to have a false joy, by the way. They're going to have a false peace and a false joy. But they'll no longer have that. The peace and the joy will be forever taken from that city.